Somewhere in Germany right now, a family is warming their home with a heater built in 1938, 87 years old, still working, still heating, still doing exactly what it was designed to do. Meanwhile, your furnace from 2019 is already making strange noises, already needing repairs, already on borrowed time. The technician tells you seven to 10 years is normal now. Normal? Your great-grandparents bought one heater for their entire lives. You've already replaced yours twice, and you're not even 50. Something happened between then and now. Uh, something changed in how we build things. And once you understand what German engineers knew in 1940, that modern manufacturers have deliberately forgotten, you'll never look at your heating system the same way again. This isn't nostalgia. This is engineering. This is material science. And the difference is costing you thousands of dollars every single decade. Number one, the weight that matters. Walk down to your basement right now. Look at your furnace. Pick up a panel if you can. Feel how light it is. Modern furnaces are designed to be lightweight, easy to ship, easy to install, easy to replace. Now, imagine trying to move a German heater from 1940. You can't, because a traditional German Kachelofen weighs between 1,500 and 8,000 pounds, not a typo, thousands of pounds of ceramic tile and brick and masonry. Your modern furnace weighs maybe 200 pounds. That weight difference isn't primitive engineering versus modern engineering. That weight difference is the entire point. Every pound of a German heater represents thermal mass, heat storage capacity, the ability to absorb heat from a fire and release it slowly over 12 to 24 hours. Your lightweight furnace has no thermal mass. It makes heat and blows it at you. The moment it stops running, the heat stops. German heaters stored heat in thousands of pounds of material. One fire in the morning warmed the home until the next morning. No constant cycling, no electricity required, no wear and tear from running all day. That weight is why they lasted 80 years. Your furnace runs thousands of cycles every winter. <laughs> Each cycle creates wear. Each cycle brings it closer to failure. Number two, the Kakalofen secret. The Germans have a word for their traditional heaters. Kachelofen. It means tile stove. And these devices have been heating German and Austrian homes since the 13th century. Not 100 years. Not 200 years. Over 700 years of continuous development and refinement. The concept is elegant. You build a fire inside a massive structure of ceramic tiles and brick. The fire burns hot and fast for one to two hours. Then you close everything down. The heat from that fire absorbs into the tiles and masonry. And for the next 12 to 24 hours, that stored heat radiates gently into your home. Efficiency ratings reach 80 to 90%. Modern furnaces claim high efficiency but they measure something different. They measure how much fuel converts to heat. German heaters maximize how much heat actually warms your body. Radiant heat from thermal mass feels completely different than forced air from a modern furnace. It warms your bones, your furniture, your walls. Everything in the room becomes a gentle heat source. Forced air just blows hot at you until the thermostat clicks off. Then you slowly get cold until it clicks back on. German families understood comfort in ways we've forgotten. Number three, the material difference. Let's talk about what your furnace is actually made of. Modern furnaces use thin sheet metal, heat exchangers made from aluminized steel that saves cost but fatigues faster. Plastic components, throughout the system. Circuit boards controlling everything. Each of these materials has a known lifespan and manufacturers know exactly what that lifespan is. Heat exchangers fatigue after 15 to 20 years of thermal cycling. 
plastic becomes brittle and cracks with heat exposure. Circuit boards fail after 10 to 12 years. Uh, this isn't speculation. Uh, this is engineering data that manufacturers use when designing products. German World War II heaters used completely different materials, thick cast iron that could withstand decades of thermal stress. Ceramic tiles fired at extreme temperatures to create nearly indestructible surfaces. Masonry and brick that actually got stronger with use as heat cured the materials further. No plastic anywhere. No circuit boards. No electronic components with built-in failure dates. The materials themselves were chosen for permanence. Not for cost optimization. Not for planned replacement cycles. For permanence. That's why heaters from 1940 still work today, while your heater from 2019 is already showing its age. Number four, the designed obsolescence truth. Here's something the heating industry doesn't advertise. Your furnace was designed around a 12 to 15 year life cycle. Not because engineers couldn't build it to last longer, but because building it longer would cost more. And market research showed consumers won't pay more upfront. So manufacturers made a choice. Thinner metals save cost and improve efficiency ratings, but fatigue faster. Electronics improve performance, but don't last decades. Plastic components resist corrosion and cost less, but fail with heat and age. High efficiency means condensation, which introduces moisture where it never existed before. Every improvement comes with a trade-off. And when you stack enough trade-offs together, you get a system that performs well for a known window of time. Then it fails. This isn't conspiracy. This is optimization for quarterly profits instead of generational durability. In 1965, a furnace cost around $800. Adjusted for inflation, that's $8,000 to $8,500 today. Those furnaces lasted 30 to 40 years because they were built like the premium products they actually were. Today's $4,000 to $6,000 furnace is a budget product disguised as modern technology. You're paying less for something designed to need replacement. German engineers in World War II would have found this unacceptable. Number five, the efficiency illusion. Modern furnaces advertise 90% efficiency, 95%, even 98%. These numbers sound impressive until you understand what they actually measure. Furnace efficiency ratings measure how much fuel converts to heat inside the unit. They don't measure how much heat actually warms your body. They don't measure comfort. They don't measure the quality of heat German Kachelofen achieved 80 to 90% efficiency, but they delivered that heat through radiation. Radiant heat warms objects directly, your body, your furniture, your walls and floors. These objects then become secondary heat sources themselves. The entire room becomes warm, evenly, gently, continuously. Modern forced air systems blow heated air around your room. The air heats up, then it rises to the ceiling where you don't live, then it cools and falls back down. Then the furnace cycles again. You feel warm air hitting you, then you feel cold air between cycles. This constant fluctuation is uncomfortable and inefficient in ways the efficiency rating doesn't capture. German families sitting around a Kachelofen experience steady, comfortable warmth with no moving parts. No fans, no noise, no drafts, just heat radiating from a massive, beautiful structure in the center of their home. We traded that experience for a metal box in the basement that blows air through ducts. Progress isn't always forward. Number six, the repair reality. When something breaks on a German heater from 1940, you fix it. A cracked tile gets replaced. A damaged brick gets repaired. The fire brick liner that takes the most abuse gets rebuilt every 15 to 20 years. 
but the structure itself continues indefinitely. The skills to repair these heaters have been passed down for centuries. Local craftsmen still practice the trade. When something breaks on your modern furnace, you often replace the entire unit. Circuit boards become obsolete within 10 years. Manufacturers discontinue parts. Replacement components cost so much that repair doesn't make economic sense. The technician looks at your 15-year-old furnace and says the same thing every time. You could repair it, but for that price, you might as well replace it. And this is designed into the business model. Manufacturers make money selling new units. They make money selling proprietary parts for a few years. Then they discontinue those parts so you have to buy a new unit. German heater builders made money once. Then they made money maintaining their work for generations. Different business model, different incentive structure, different outcome for the family buying the heater. Number seven, the true cost comparison. Let's calculate what modern heating actually costs over a lifetime. Average furnace costs $5,000 installed. Average lifespan is 12 to 15 years with proper maintenance. Over 60 years of home ownership, that's four to five furnace replacements. $20,000 to $25,000. Plus emergency repairs between replacements. Plus higher utility bills as each unit ages and loses efficiency. Plus the inconvenience of breakdowns that always happen in January. Now consider the German approach. A traditional cachalofen cost more upfront significantly more. Installation required skilled craftsmen and took weeks to complete. But that heater lasted 80 years, often longer. Some antique units in European collections are 400 years old and still functional. One purchase, one installation, decades of reliable heat. German families made an investment. Modern families make payments forever. And here's what makes this comparison even worse. German heaters cost almost nothing to operate. One to two fires per day using minimal fuel. No electricity required. No monthly utility bills beyond the cost of firewood. Modern furnaces require constant fuel and electricity. The operating costs over 60 years dwarf the purchase price. You're not just paying more to replace your heater every 15 years. You're paying more every single month while you own it. Tonight, your furnace will cycle on and off dozens of times, each cycle wearing down the components, each cycle bringing it closer to the day when a technician tells you it's time to replace. Somewhere in Bavaria tonight, a heater built before World War II will warm a family the same way it warmed their grandparents. One fire, 12 hours of heat, no electricity, no moving parts, no failure date engineered into its design. We didn't lose this technology. We abandoned it. We chose convenience over durability. We chose cheap upfront costs over lifetime value. We chose quarterly profit cycles over generational craftsmanship. German engineers who built heaters in 1940 understood something fundamental about heating homes. Mass matters, materials matter, craftsmanship matters, simplicity matters. You know, these principles haven't changed in 700 years, but we forgot them in 70. The good news is this knowledge isn't lost. Masonry heaters still exist. Craftsmen still build them. The technology that kept German families warm through two world wars is still available today. It costs more up front. It requires more planning, but it lasts a lifetime. Your great grandparents knew this, now you know it too. The question is, what you'll do with this knowledge the next time your furnace dies? Next.